My name is Pastor Josh Lai and I am very joyful to come your way with these editions of the Grace Fields with regards to the Caris movement as we go to the campuses with a radical message of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we keep increasing from grace to grace as we bring you the grace fields every week. And I know the Lord is impacting your spirit with these words of grace. Um, last week, we had a great time. Let's take some excerpts and I will be right back. Away then to God, even the God of all grace with your every need, temporal and spiritual. Listen, don't ask, can he provide a table in the wilderness? He has brought you through six trails. Will he not deliver you out of the seventh? He's pardoned you 99 times. Will he not pardon the hundreds? He has rolled many stones from off your buried mercy and out of your path of difficulty. Will he and can he remove this great mountain that covers you with its deep dark shadow and make your way a plain? Oh, you of little faith is not our God the God of all grace? Wherefore then do you reason and doubt and fear? You don't need to be afraid. He's the God of all grace. Do you think that coming to God by Jesus Christ and casting yourself upon his grace as a poor lost worthless sinner he will cast you off? Never! God may cast down a poor soul, and this he often does in love, to lay it low even to the dust, that he may learn that salvation from first to last is of his free grace. But he will never cast off a poor soul that has fled to the asylum of his mercy, that has cast himself upon his boundless grace to sinners. He's too gracious too divinely, essentially gracious for this. We're still continuing today with the God of all grace, episode 6. And I take the scriptural reading from Romans chapter 5, verse 7. Let's hear the reading of God's word. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for you and I by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Amen. Right. Now, an important and interesting part of our subject now invites our attention. We refer to the Lord Jesus Christ as the official and responsible head of the covenant of grace. Of all his grace to sinners, every reservoir of his, its conduits and every fountain, um, its channels, every spring, its rivulets, the infinite and eternal fullness of grace in God would have availed us nothing had not a suitable channel been provided for its conveyance. God, through Jesus Christ, or the Father, through Jesus Christ, by his impressive language of a sacred song, have existed as the fountain sealed, secluded eternally, but for Jesus. Everything that was in God was hidden. It was revealed, opened, revealed by Christ. And therefore Christ became the conduit. In other words, there would have been no channel of grace from God to the sinner. No possible avenue for the sinner's approach to God, but for the one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now this channel through which his grace was to flow this medium by which the sinner was to approach was of the Father's own providing. It must not, it must all in respect be worthy of the being with whom it originated, whose honor it was to vindicate, whose glory it was to secure. And it must be in all respects suitable to the sinner, whose grace and glory, whose salvation and heaven it was to accomplish. All this, Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, was for you and I. Our arbitrator, 
laying his right hand on the Father and his left hand upon us. The right hand on his Godhead upon God and the left hand on his manhood upon man. So making peace by the blood of his cross. Opening a medium through with God consistent with his holiness. And man, despite our sinfulness, could meet in a state of atonement. It's the same word, atonement. This matter of reconciliation on the part of God has been one of some perplexity to many pious minds, giving rise to much obscurity, if not unsoundness of idea on the subject, because honestly, they don't have a clue. They cannot fathom and they cannot understand. So they play it down as if it is stupid and it is foolishness. Now the chief difficulty has been the harmony of the two ideas of everlasting love and reconciliation. Now if God's love to the church were, as he affirms it to be, from everlasting, the question arises, where exists the necessity of mediatorship and reconciliation? Now perhaps the following remarks not before published, of an eminent and deeply taught saint of God, Mary Winslow, she said something, if the holiness of God were never incensed against the church falling in Adam, then there had been no need of the death of Christ. Christ died to reconcile God to us and us to God, from where sprang the wrath of God which Christ endured. Now, the proper answer to this question will give us a loving view of God as a reconciled father in Christ. A mediator supposes the parties between the whole he mediates at variance with the one with the other, else there had been no necessity of mediatorship. The reconciliation with which Christ effected was not the love of God towards his people. For that was never lost, but to the justice of God offended by sin. Christ is the peacemaker. He is our peace. Justice, holiness, and truth are all reconciled and harmonized towards his people in Jesus. So that it is proper, as it is sweet, unspeakably sweet, to speak to and of him as a reconciled God in Christ. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Christ Jesus. So watch this. God's love has never reduced. God's love has never increased. What Christ Jesus did was to satisfy justice. In other words, it is just a revelation of his love that we never knew of. But his love has always remained the same because he doesn't change. And that is why he's always been the God of grace. But we never had that revelation like we should have. If today Christ is revealed and therefore we can find the full expression of God's grace in its uttermost discovery, you and I must enjoy this grace. And that's where I leave you. And I just want you to know you deserve by God's grace to enjoy this grace. Until I see you again next week, enjoy Caris. My name is Pastor Josh Lai. See you.